So I have recently made some pretty notable changes with my army setup, and I know you guys really enjoy getting update videos like this. A lot of you have questions about what units and officers I'm running, where I'm investing my tech, and so I'm gonna get you guys caught up to speed on all of that today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Welcome back, I hope everyone is doing wonderful. I am super excited to get you guys caught up to speed on the changes that I have made with my units and my officers and what direction I am going with my tech. Before we get into it though, if you guys enjoy videos like this and wanna see more of them in the future, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you are not already so you don't miss any future uploads. Let's try to get this video to at least 200 likes. And at the end of the video, after you all see where I'm at with my units and officers and tech, I would also love to hear where you all are at. Let me know in the comments if your lineup is somewhat comparable to mine. If you have gone a completely different direction compared to mine, I would love to see what all of you guys have going as well. Now let's jump in and start talking about what changes I've made. So the top row of units you can see are the units that I am now currently running. Most of you that have followed me for really any length of time on the channel knew for a very long time, like a really long time, at least the last two, maybe longer than that years, I have ran what is pretty much a hybrid setup. I had one field fighting unit. I had one artillery unit. I had one anti-tank gun unit. I had a rocket launcher that was more or less a filler unit. And then I had a super heavy. I built that setup a long time ago when base to base was still a little bit more prevalent. It's really not so much at this point in the game, especially when you were late game competing in theater of conquest events. Of course, whales can still do it but they generally do it only against weaker players, but it is not very common and it is not very easy to do solo, especially base to base. So there's really not a need for a super heavy unless you are planning on tanking bases and leading army groups in that situation, that would make sense. I also once upon a time had two Liberty artillery units way back in the day when modern units got introduced, I had to scrap one of them for prototype pieces. We've all been there and felt the pain of that. I have finally been able to make a second Liberty Artillery unit again. I am working on developing that now. So I have replaced that with the rocket launcher. I have replaced my super heavy tank with the Vanguard helicopter to give me a little bit more flexibility uh, in the open field. I can essentially run my own mini army group if I really wanted to. I could juice this Martyr Watch helicopter all the way up to 9.2. And then my three tanks would be 9.2, 100% completely enhanced and maxed out from top to bottom with the exception of wrenches. But nonetheless, I could run three fully kitted out tank units. That's not what I'm doing though. My Martyr Watch unit is basically playing a little bit of the role and so is the Vanguard helicopter to be fair, but they're essentially playing the role of not only being able to compete, the Martyr Watch helicopter does not go out on the field right now. Eventually at some point in time, it will of course, but right now I'm not sending an eight star unit out onto the field. That is just a death trap. But the Martyr Watch helicopter and the Vanguard helicopter are somewhat filling the role in a base defensive situation like the anti-tank gun, but they also give me the open field flexibility that the super heavy and the anti-tank gun definitely did not. Now I have chose to keep those three units at least for the time being. I've still got my 7.2 star Vanguard Super Heavy, the 7.2 star Martyr Watch Rocket Launcher, and then the 7.2 star Vanguard Anti-Tank Gun. Depending on the situation, I can kind of mix and match and throw one in there and take one out. If I need to, eventually as I continue to develop more units that I can scrap for prototype pieces, maybe I will get away from these and I will scrap these at some point for prototype pieces as well. But I'm just not in a situation. My three 9.2 units are fully maxed out. They are 100% complete on prototype pieces and everything else, modifications, all of that. I am now working on my fourth unit, which is going to be my second Liberty Artillery unit. So for the time being, I don't really need prototype pieces because I don't even have enough like ammo, for example, to develop the next unit. So I'm kind of in a holding pattern right now. I'm going to hold these units and I can, you know, kind of inter, inter switch them if I need to, depending again on the situation that my alliance is in at any given time. If we need somebody to tank bases, 
I can, of course, juice up that super heavy. If I'm going to be in a base defensive situation where maybe a village is getting burned or something like that, and I need to jump in and get as many kills as I possibly can, then maybe I look at swapping out for the anti-tank gun. So there's a variety of things I can do, but right now I'm somewhat in a holding pattern, but I have totally gotten away from that hybrid setup, and I am getting very, very much in a niche kind of role. I am still split between helicopters and, anti uh, and artillery, but I'm going all in on tanks. But with that being said, of course, the artillery, especially the Liberty artillery, are still phenomenal units. I've got incredible parts on them. They are great units to still send out to army groups. They are still fantastic for base defense. And then, of course, after I'm done with tanks and the modern war research tree, then I am going to probably go all in on artillery next. I have gotten away from developing my Air Force. Now, my Air Force, my advanced combat tech, my plane tech, is maxed out along with my artillery and tank tech, but Modern War is where 100% of my focus is currently going, and it will continue to stay that way until all of my Modern War tank tech is 100% completely maxed. Now, in regard to my officer setup, here is what I've got. Nothing has, of course, changed with my light tank. I've got Rapier and Golden Eagle. Also, I would like to give a quick shout out to Corrupted. I spent some time a couple weeks ago with Corrupted when I finally made these big changes. Him and I were bouncing ideas off each other in terms of officers, so he kind of gave me uh, a different perspective on some officers, and it was a great conversation, but shout out to him as he kind of threw some ideas out at me, and one of them ended up being Marco Rossi. Marco Rossi is with uh, Valkyrie on my Vanguard helicopter. Of course, I still want the base benefits from Thorn Countess and Steel Fighter, so that is why I have plugged them in on the Martyr Watch helicopter. Of course, most of my artillery focus is on base defense. It does go out into army groups and it does do okay in the open field against other units most of the time, but it is built more for a base defensive situation. So we have got Argent Flame and Antonina Shevchenko naturally. And then on the second one, because infantry has been so much more prevalent lately, that is where Eye of Providence and Vox become relevant. Vox is more of a filler unit simply because I want the benefit of her that she's going to be giving my base. She is not obviously the most ideal or suitable officer for an artillery unit. She is just there as a filler officer so I can get the benefit of what she can provide me on base defense. Nothing more, nothing less. Eye of Providence, like I said, is there for his fortification damage against mainly infantry. And then when it comes to my Air Force, absolutely nothing has changed in regards to my Air Force officers. Those are all the same. I kind of just interswitch the bomber and the fighter depending on what I am doing or what my alliance needs. This past Theater of Conquest event that just ended, the enemy alliances pretty much had little to no air support, so the Martyr Watch bomber was the absolute moneymaker there, so that's why I have that juiced up. In the future, I'm sure we'll run into teams that have quite a bit better air cover, which makes the bomber not as effective. And then at that point, I will kind of somewhat switch back to my Vanguard fighter at that time. Now to get you all caught up to speed on what I am doing officer wise, the next officer I am focusing on is going to be Stinger Fist. I am working on leveling him up to level 60. I have currently leveled up one of his skills, his third skill. I am using that on the skill training system. Once I get him to level 60, I am going to start chipping away at these skills as well. I'm going to awaken him and then throw him on one of my artillery units, maybe even the anti-tank gun. After Stinger Fist, another option that I'm going to start looking at is going to be Uncle Ivankov. I am not sold on Uncle Ivankov. He is obviously a really good officer and is going to be a big asset, especially for his perks he's going to give your base. I'm probably, once I get Stinger Fist done, though, I'm probably going to go into somewhat of a holding pattern, and I'm at least going to wait and see what new officers might be in the game at that time. Maybe there are none. I, I don't know how long it's going to take for me to finish Stinger Fist completely, but once I get to that point, then I'm going to probably, like I said, go into a holding pattern and at least see where we're at, see if we've got any new officers that have been added to the game at that time. And if not, then I will probably commit to Uncle Ivankov. Tech-wise, I have been doing a couple of different things. I have been slow playing my advanced city defense. I have gone... Uh, a little bit into this, I for a long time didn't even touch it, but I have maxed out this HP recovery, the first one. 
I am going all in and I'm going to work on until it is maxed out the base HP. So I've really been committing to leveling up my base, base HP. For a long time, my base was paper. To be fair, it somewhat still is, but it is not nearly as flimsy as it once was. It's, it's starting to get there. I am definitely going to continue to slow play this and work on this as I chip away at my modern war tank tech. Obviously, you guys know my advanced combat tank tech is maxed out. Advanced combat artillery tech is maxed out. And advanced combat plane tech is maxed out. And I haven't even touched an infantry tech. And then on modern war, I have gone all in on my uh, tank tech. I am getting about to this halfway point. I've done the minimums to get here on these last few. Now I'm just waiting to get city badges and I will knock these out and then I will keep trucking onward until the very end. And then of course, double back and finish anything that I have not already completed. So that's where I'm at. I've, like I said, made some big changes. I have got rid of the more hybrid approach. I've gone all in on tanks with still some sprinkled artillery focus in there. Working on some base defense. I'm excited for this new setup. I got to use it a little bit towards the back half of San Francisco after I finally committed to these changes. I'm excited to continue to develop my tank tech in the modern war tech tree, and I think that's going to pay off really, really big long term. Having that dual combination, I, I only so far have ran the light tank and the helicopter together. Eventually, of course, I will run that second martyr helicopter as well, which will give me three units. Assuming I don't make any changes between now and then, I might, who knows, but if I don't, I will run that three tank combo and essentially have my own little mini army group which I'm really excited about, or I can just, if I'm not in a position to where I can, you know, sit there and micromanage units and play, I at least have three really viable units I can send out to army groups. So that should be a big win long term. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I would love to hear what you all are focused on. If your lineup has anything comparable to mine, or are you focused on something completely different? I would love to hear in the comments. If you have made it this far into the video, if you've got access to Discord and are not already in our community Discord server, the link to that is going to be in the description of the video below. Click on that link. It'll take you right into the community Discord server. Whether you're a new player and you have questions, want to learn, whether you're a veteran player and just want to come hang out and get to know different people in the community, or if you just want to come give me about my lineup, all of, all of it is great. Everybody's welcome. Thanks for taking the time to watch today's video. We'll see you all on the next one.